A bunch of guys yell in German about a glowy box for ten minutes before a Hydra dude comes in and steals it. Meanwhile, it's 1941 and Steve Rogers really wants to be in the military and help fight for his country. Problem is, he's tiny, skinny, has about a hundred medical conditions, and constantly gets into fights that his friend Bucky has to pull him out of. In an attempt to keep Steve out of trouble for more than five minutes, Bucky takes him to the Stark Expo where they watch Howard Stark blow up a car. Not even three minutes later, Steve is trying to enlist in the army again. Bucky tries to talk him out of it, but Steve is extremely stubborn so he just tells him not to do anything stupid. Steve immediately goes and does something stupid. This military scientist dude, Dr. Abraham, overheard Steve's overly American attitude and decided to actually bring him into the army. Meanwhile, in a stereotypical villain lair, there's some stereotypical villains doing some stereotypical plotting with a stereotypical doomsday device. Back with our skinny soldier Steve, we meet Peggy Carter, who makes her entrance by punching a guy who mocked her in the face. She's pretty awesome. Steve is easily the skinniest and weakest guy in this entire training camp, and he's so self-sacrificing that he would probably get killed in battle almost instantly. Perfect, decides Dr. Abraham. Are you serious? asks the rest of the United States military. After Steve gives Peggy a tour of all the places he's been beat up, he goes to get an upgrade in a very American way. Steroids! But of course, Hydra has to crash the party, destroying the rest of the super soldier serum and also killing Dr. Abraham. RIP. But on the bright side, Steve gets a chance to test out his drug-induced buffness as he chases the guy across New York. The guy dies and they don't get to interrogate him or anything, but hey, Steve has muscles now. However, since they were only able to get one buff guy inside of an entire army of them, the military decides to put Steve to work as an actor rather than a soldier. Steve is just kind of sadly resigned to this until Peggy shows up and is like, hey, Bucky might be dead. Steve goes into a best friend induced rage and breaks a couple hundred guys out of Hydra captivity, including Bucky. This inspires an entire montage of Captain America and friends beating up Nazis and destroying Hydra. Red Skull's getting very annoyed and has also decided he's not a Nazi anymore, he's too good for them and has exceeded human understanding and other stereotypical villain nonsense. Meanwhile, outside of all the fighting, Steve likes Peggy, but he doesn't know how to talk to girls. Like, at all. You're doing great, man! Rather than talk to Peggy, Cap goes and jumps off a cliff onto a train. But oh no, turns out the train is actually an ambush. Thankfully, Bucky came along, so through the power of teamwork- Oh, oh nope, Bucky's dead. Bucky is 100% dead, he's never coming back. Steve caught this scientist guy Zola though, which is not really any compensation whatsoever. The military tries to interrogate him, but he's naturally super vague and cryptic, so Red Skull breaks into the movie for a five minute villain interlude. This reminds everyone that they have a plot to worry about, so they have a meeting to figure out what to do next. How about I just show up at Red Skull's house and beat him up? That's kind of a terrible idea, Steve. Yeah, but I'm gonna do it anyway. How are you not dead yet? So Steve goes and kicks down Red Skull's front door, only to find out that he's moved to an airplane. Through the power of drug enhanced muscles, Steve makes a flying leap and manages to grab onto the plane in midair. Steve and Red Skull face down for a final fight, only to have it cut short when Red Skull is laser beamed into oblivion by his glowy space cube. Well, I guess he's gone. Problem is, oh no, the airplane is filled with missiles. Steve, give us a moment, we're gonna find you a safe place to land. No, I got a better idea, I'm just gonna crash it into the ocean. Wait, what? Well, I guess that's the end of the movie. Cap's gone and oh wait, nope, there he is about 70 years later. Maybe he just has the superpower of surviving bad decisions.